prices went down, uh, it is uh, our take that the real driver of that and the thing, the, the, the first domino that failed to cause that was the West Coast port situation, which backed some product up and really put uh, domestic buyers of pork in a very advantageous position where they could kind of sit back and wait for the market to come to them. As prices began to fall at the wholesale level and at the, at the producer level, there was a very strong incentive to, uh, to, to speed up marketing. If you know they're going to be worth less next week, uh, you want to ship them this week. And so that pushed hog numbers higher during the first quarter of the year uh, as we kind of hurried these hogs to, to town. And we started dropping weights, which was the evidence that we were pulling hogs forward. Uh, that added to the supply situation. In addition, we had the, uh, the added pressure of more baby more wean pigs than what we had expected to have over the winter because of uh, a very mild, uh, especially by comparison to a year ago, season for PEDV. Uh, our calculations show we know that death losses, piglet death losses were not zero, but they weren't very far off from that. If we look back to the December Hogs and Pigs report, the, uh, the December through February litter size published by USD in March was almost exactly the size that we had forecast if PEDV losses had been zero. And so a very mild winter on PEDV has added to the number of pigs that we have uh, coming. And uh, so we had large numbers of hogs forcing hogs out of finishing barns because we were taking them to much heavier weights. And so those weights have come down. Uh, it was kind of the perfect storm, and I know that term gets used too much, but uh, uh, every factor was really negative on the supply side for hogs and on the on the export demand side. And uh, it pushed these prices down lower than what we ever expected them to do. Now the March Hogs and Pigs report came out and told us what we already knew, that market hog inventories were up substantially over 7% versus a year ago. Uh, but uh, we always have to remember that we were comparing to 2014. And that is a complete outlier year that is so outlier that we're probably not going to use any of the 2014 numbers in analysis. We'll just go back to the 2013 numbers and say that was a that was an oddball and uh, and so we're comparing to that to do price forecasts at this point. Said we had about 7% more market hogs. There were a few surprises in that report. The biggest one was that the breeding herd was only up 2.2%. Uh, analysts had expected it to be up 3.5%. It was up 3.7% year on year in December. Uh, we know that the breeding herd is growing. When we talk to breeding uh, stock companies, uh, yield supplies are spoken for for uh, well out into, into 2016 at this point, so we know there's more growth coming. Uh, the thing that I really thought coming out of the March Hogs and Pigs report, though, was that in spite of these larger supplies, we would start seeing some turnarounds on the demand side that would help us, and in fact, we have. We rallied these hog prices back up into the low to mid-80s, Hog futures have hit, uh, you know, uh, uh, somewhere in the range of we thought 84, 85 for the summer on, on occasion here recently. Uh, the opportunities for producers have gone from back in March. Uh, the futures market had losses of six dollars a head in it. Now it's got profits of roughly ten dollars per head in it for this year. Uh, every every contract on the board right now is profitable relative to where costs are. And so uh, we've seen a nice rally here back to about the price forecast that we had coming out of the March Hogs and Pigs report, which were pretty, bear, pretty bullish relative to most analysts at the time. I, I felt like I was out on another pretty shaky limb there, but uh, it's certainly